Hello, I'm Leah Murphy. And I'm Mindy Watts, and we're here from Interface Studio, a small planning and design firm located here in Philly. Tonight we're going to be talking about part of our design process that we call urban provocation. Slash, this is what we did last weekend while you guys were enjoying the sun. In addition to urban design and planning, Mindy and I both have um, also backgrounds in the arts, which definitely informs our work as planners. But um, let me just talk a little bit about the office first, I'm sorry. We're located in Philly, we've been here for three and a half years, most of our work has been in the city, but we're starting to expand our geographic reach. Um, so a major part of our process is to use our creative talents and energies to create images that provoke and inspire to encourage public participation. What we're calling the urban provocation is really just an image that represents ideas or themes or just attitudes about space without necessarily um, referencing a physical design, um, as in much of Archigram's work from the 1970s. And this kind of public participation is really a central focus of our work um, that we think is really important. And this is from a video installation that we projected in a storefront in Chicago for three weeks to promote a public open house. Uh, <laughs> Phil's supposed to be animated. Yeah, yeah, what's up with that? Um, so during the open house, we used uh, a variety of methods of gathering public input. And we really value uh, this local expertise because it's really this kind of push-pull input-output, um, call and response you know, that's right. <laughs> between the studio and the client and the public that enables us to create a shared vision for a place. So this whole process of provoking, engaging, absorbing, and vision forming is really initiated by the image itself. So in the Lower Italian Market, we pr propose one way of inviting public dialogue about a key redevelopment site. Why not transform that blank wall into a canvas? Or how about goats parading down the street? That's the way to invite fresh ideas about a forgotten commercial corridor. In Francisville, we also installed a two-story video installation at the corner of Bridge and Girard. It was about communication and implementation, actually tackling a project while the planning process was ongoing. Clip Collective helped us make this happen. At the corner of Kensington and Allegheny, we noticed a ton of people standing around waiting for the bus and spitting their gum everywhere. Should we power wash the sidewalks or should we kind of go with this human behavior? We decided to run with it with a quick and quirky DIY recommendation. In Northern Liberties, we proposed a floating path to provide continuous waterfront access in places where access was restricted. In this case, the image serves as a long-term vision to inspire people to get involved and stay involved to help affect meaningful change. We often find ourselves working in places that are facing really harsh realities. And in these cases, the provocations are not necessarily playful, but more grounded in some serious issues like housing, social programs, infrastructure. But if we weren't working on a project, which we are most of the time, and someone asked us to come up with some ideas in, about how to improve our life in Philly, what we might say is, well, let's start with some simple quality of life type things. Like in our bus dominant transit system, wouldn't it be awesome if we could buy our tokens at street level? So many proposals have, put forth, have been put forth for transforming the viaduct, all of them severely lacking in the slip and slide category. Wouldn't it be great if we had a way to commute to work in the hot summer days that would keep us cool? We know Mayor Netter would be all about it. So Philly's a gritty city and that's part of what we love about it. But how about a little reverse graffiti where the artist tags in soap and water on a dirty wall instead of using spray paint? That way, the only way to get rid of the graffiti is to clean the whole entire wall. And history occupies such a large space of Philadelphia, both physically and identity-wise. But it's almost like this definition of history ends with the signing of the Constitution. So what if we kind of expanded the scope of history and the intent of preservation to include a more complete history of Philadelphia? So I know we're tired of drinking bad wine here in PA, and we think it's time to do something about this to get those wine laws changed. Thank you. So how about a protest, critical mass style, where we shut down the city with drinking in the streets? BYOB, of course. <laughs> Instead of turning up our noses at the homeless bathing in Logan Circle, what if we actually legitimized its use as a public bathtub? And it, you know, this isn't the ideal solution to providing homeless services, but it would definitely provoke um, better solutions in the long term. So these are just a few of our ideas, but we would love to hear from you. So why not install a photo suggestion booth in City Hall that would come and you can capture your face and your idea and it would get zipped right up to Mayor Nutter. <laughs> Thank you.
So now that we've put forth a few of our own ideas, hopefully we've actually provoked you in some way to think of yourselves as local resident experts and think of the city of Philadelphia itself as some sort of laboratory where you can actually have some sort of influence on it, um, contributing to the dialogue about Philly's future. Thank you. Thanks.